Hey, what's going on everybody? This here is Beaver Nation. Uh, today's video, I want to go over a fundamental problem I see with World War II airborne reenacting and that it is always done wrong. So in this video, I just want to kind of go over my kit as well as some lessons learned and then where you can get the right gear from the right people. Because the problem with airborne reenacting is everybody goes and buys a lot of times some cheap Chinese stuff and you can tell because it's always some piss yellow color or something like that and anybody who reenacts airborne will know exactly what I'm talking about and if you're offended by this video well I'm talking to you so alright so let's start with the most obvious thing you're gonna need is gonna be your jump uniform so your jump uniform you got really two of the best people that I can think of are gonna be at the front or World War II impressions at the front you're gonna have a little less pocket space as their pockets are a lot smaller than your originals and World War II impressions vendors but the problem is with World War II impressions it's like $220 for a top and $220 for the bottom versus $150 for the set. Now when you buy the 42s your first thing isn't just alright I got the 42s I'm good like, I, like uh, I'm saying this year is going to be Normandy so for Normandy what you're going to need next is you're going to need the CC2 your uniform. Later on, I'm going to show you guys how to CC2 your uniforms, uh, but right now, these are already CC2'd. As you can see here, this is going to be for my D-Day plus 6 impression. As you can see, I'm going to have blood, because uh, I'll usually wipe off or something for my impression. You got field sews, and you have holes. The uniform is not clean. Remember, these guys lived in these uniforms for days and weeks on end. So when you show up to a reenactment and you're doing, you know, D-Day plus six event with your, you know, brand new M42s that haven't even been taken out of the package yet, you're going to look kind of foolish. Just saying. So if you notice here, the uniform is going to be a lot more dark. It's going to look more damp. That is because of the CC2. Uh, I put both on here because you can choose whether to wear suspenders or you can choose to wear a belt. Depends on what you do. Personally, I like to wear the belt more than the suspenders, but... Depending on what I'm doing, I'll switch around. So those are the trousers. Next, you're going to have your top. Your top is going to be different depending on each battalion and each company, to be honest. For me, I do Fox Company 502nd. And for 502nd, they're going to have, or for, I think it's 2nd Battalion, 502nd is going to have this white cord. I used an old t-shirt. And you can, yeah, an old white t-shirt or something. And if we notice here, another reenactorism that's always wrong is everybody always has their pockets not full. These guys lived in these uniforms, especially these tops. They jumped into Normandy with them. So obviously they're going to be a little bit more full. You can have cigarettes. You can have, you know, extra ammo. Sometimes I'll put a grenade or a smoke bomb or something, something I don't want carried on my suspenders in here. It's up to you, really. It's whatever's comfortable. You're going to have your reinforcements. All of that, uh, as you can see, this uniform is CC2'd. It's extremely dirty. It's extremely worn in. And this honestly took me a few weeks to get like this. Uh, so extra little things, depending on if your company did it, you can etch your last name into it. Uh, another thing you can do is you can attach your M2 knife. Let me get that right down here. That's what that pocket is for. It's one of those up to you kind of things. Now remember these uniforms would have been also worn in a training situation too before they've had their modifications. Uh, so you're gonna have things like your laundry number. You know, Little things like that are what build your impression and make you feel more authentic. Uh, I went above and beyond. I put sweat stains. I put chest sweat stains. I went a little crazy. I got a rip in it from some barbed wire. I got blood. Because in this situation, I picked up a paratrooper who was injured over my shoulder doing the fireman's carry. And, well, blood got out of my uniform. Oh, well. So that is going to be the 42 top. The next part is pretty simple and simplistic. You're going to have your tank top. Uh, don't wear a white t-shirt. That's Everybody does it. I don't know why. White t-shirts were not an issued item. They were a private purchase. So, and plus it looks really stupid. So, just don't. Uh, this one is made by What Price Glory. I like What Price Glory's 47, or, uh, 47s. 37s because their tops run a little large. So I can have a lot more leg, er, leg room, arm room 
when moving and doing combat stuff. Next part is going to be your jump boots. Your jump boots for these, they're, as you can see, they're not actually shined and they're all beat up. These are because these are my combat boots. These are not meant to look pretty. They're meant to be functional. I have uh, broken these in. These here are Kokorins, but they are factory seconds, so I only had to pay like $65 for them. Pretty much there's like one or two stitching messed up. Messed up. That's whatever. Uh, instead of using the leather laces, I, a lot of people will use paracord. That's what I did. It's a lot easier than the leather, and it's completely accurate. You can find lots of pictures with it. Next is going to be your leg knife for Normandy. So you can use just a shoelace to tie it around the leg. So now another big thing that people do a lot is they have this little fantasy item piece, and they call it a utility strap. There were no utility straps. So this here is a piece of a cot. This was completely accurate and normal. You can find lots of pictures in black and white, and you'll see this little white thing. That's what that is. People also would use a shoelace. There's multiple different ways, but please stop using that fantasy piece. It does not make your impression look very good. All right, next up is the helmet. The helmet is pretty simple and straightforward. As you can see, I got a bullet dent in mine. Add a little extra. Use original scrim. You can find original scrim anyway. It looks a lot brighter due to the lighting, but it's actually pretty dark. Uh, problem is, is with not original scrim is it's way too bright and it's way too whatever. You'll know original scrim because you'll feel it and it's going to feel kind of oily and yeah. Don't use a khaki net. I know this looks khaki. This is just faded. I'm going to have to switch off this, this net later. Don't use khaki nets as that was an extreme late war thing and they would not have been used very often. This helmet is made by Jay Murray. As you can see, I got the 502nd insignia on there. Also, don't John Wayne your chin straps because, well, that's just another reenactorism. All right, and now on to the meat and potatoes of your impression, and that is going to be your belt. So, in my belt, I'm going to be, uh, what do you call it? I got my rigger pouches. Rigger pouches were normal for an M1 Garand gunner. Uh, rigger pouches, you can get made by a few different people that are really good. The kind of a good rule of thumb for rigger's pouches is the crappier they look the more accurate they are these were quickly made by the riggers and that's it that's pretty simple straightforward uh if you're a paratrooper you can't if for the 101st i know a lot of private purchase 1911s were done so if you want to have a 1911 you can i'm not sure about 82nd i'm not very familiar with them so don't quote me on that you're gonna have your canteen of course any vendor is good just kind of break it in i have an original canteen here I keep an extra two magazines. I might honestly get rid of this. I'm not too sure. I haven't really. I'm kind of really testing on whether to uh, have that or not. Or just put it on my actual trouser belt. All right, next, which is a big thing, is everyone will have had a M43 or some had the M1910 shell. I choose the 43. Very beat up because this is my plus six impression. I have another one that's brand new that I use for my pre-jump or post-jump plus one. Look, this here is called transitional, meaning it's got the OD7 mixed with OD3, which is completely fine, very accurate, and honestly, a lot more accurate with paratroopers. Again, I got two more rigger pouches. Keep your rigger pouches in the front. That's how you access your ammunition, right? So you're going to keep it in the front. Next up, you're going to have grenades. Don't buy those modern grenades with the holes in the bottom because the color is inaccurate and the spoon is inaccurate. You can get these from Urbana Armory for about eh, 35 bucks. They're a past plastic but concrete. Like it's really still heavy to the hand. It actually feels like you're holding a grenade. So uh, felt pads are completely good for the 101st. Me, I taped up mine. I've seen a few pictures of it because I'm sick and tired of them moving around from taking the kit off. You can see I put blood where the blood would have been on my jacket to correspond with it. And there you go. The paratrooper first aid kit. If you were doing 101st, do not tie this to your helmet. Stop doing that. That's a market garden thing, and it annoys a lot of people who do airborne. So, rule of thumb, stop tying that to your helmet. Unless you're in one of those weird battalion or weird companies that everybody did it, then don't. Next year up is going to be your musette bag. This is where you're going to keep pretty much everything. Your cigarettes. For me, I keep book, my hygiene stuff, socks, 
things like that. Spoon, uh, I'm gonna put that in my uh, jacket. But yep, you're gonna want one of these. This is Musette bag, mine's an original. Uh, at the front's good. I don't really know about any other vendors. And then a lot of people carried a GP bag, general purpose bag, you can carry ammunition. If you're a 1919, a part of a 1919 team, you can keep those ammo boxes and stuff in there, stuff like that, depending on the impression. You'll have one of those. A lot of NCOs carried these for just having extra ammo for their soldiers. I've seen, I've heard lots of stories. That I think a 508th vet told me that. And then next is your standard bandolier. Pretty simple and straightforward. All right, guys, so that was a quick, uh, quick little thing on the video. Let me know if there's anything else you want to see. Later on, I could do a Market Garden, a Battle of the Bulge, and then into Germany impression as well. So let me know. Thank you.